Hmm. Interesting. An unexpected bunny. What are you doing there? I'm going to talk about the Horus Heresy because Luke Jesus is dumb. Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for a bonus 8th edition of Warhammer 40,000 News Flash bonus on the 24th of May 2017. So, I hope you like the bunny, by the way. I've shot a second video for today because a very interesting post went up over at the Warhammer Community website. And this is a data sheet for the Leviathan Siege Dreadnought, or at least a Chaos Corrupted variant of it, the Hellforged Leviathan Siege Dreadnought. And this is really interesting because it's the first look we've got at a Forge World model in the 8th edition. Obviously, this is a 40k version. But nonetheless, it is interesting. And we also actually have a the first direct comparison for a Forge World only gun or weapon system in this Dreadnought. So what I'm going to do in this video is I've got a few salient points here to run through. Then I've printed out a copy of the data sheet and hopefully if technology works, we'll zoom in on that and we'll go through some of the details as well um, because there's, there's a few, quite a few juicy tidbits of information in there. Let's start then. So this is a Hellforged Leviathan Dreadnought. So this is Chaos for Warhammer 40,000. So 41st Millennium Gaming. So the first thing to say, well, this is the largest of the Astartes Dreadnought chassis and it's a very potent unit. So it has 14 wounds, a strength and toughness of eight and the first vehicle armor save of two plus we've seen so this is a real bruiser this and if we compare it to the standard castroferum dreadnought stats we were given a couple of weeks back that only had eight wounds and a saving throw of three plus so this is a much more potent unit and yeah i would guess you would expect that another key point we get the first forge world weapon to be translated over to 8th edition and that is a Grav Flux Bombard. So the Grav Flux Bombard is an alternate weapon for this. I thought it was very effective in 7th and that's continued over into 8th. I've been speculating about this for a while and this post has confirmed that the AP values go beyond minus 4. So the previous most powerful AP we'd seen was minus 4. We've now taken that a step further with the Grav Flux Bombard which is a minus 5 AP. So for example if something had a straight saving throw of 2 plus if it got hit by this gun it wouldn't get saved, so it's very powerful. Lots of the rules that we've been getting over the past few weeks in the various updates apply to various weapons and capabilities in this unit, so it's quite interesting to see all these in one place. And haven't actually, although we've got the data sheet, we haven't actually got the points values, although we do have the power level, which in this case is 16, and the weapon options appear to be free in the context of the power level, but I'm not sure at the moment if that's just because they've given us a truncated version of it as opposed to a full-on, the fully detailed one. Although when we had the Zinchian Thousand Suns Marines, we did get power level upgrades. So it seems like the weapon options are all freebies here. We have actually got a slight issue as this has been presented, but maybe, maybe not. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Here we've got the stat sheet. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, so let's start looking at the profile for the Hellforged Leviathan Dreadnought. Movement, Weapon Skill, Ballistic Skill, base is Movement 8, Weapon Skill 2+, plus Ballistic Skill 2+. plus. So a very skillful and accurate fighting machine, just like its 30k incarnation was originally. It's a strength and a toughness of 8. It has 14 wounds, 4 attacks, a leadership value of 8, and a saving throw of 2+. plus. A Hellforged Leviathan Dreadnought is a single model. It is equipped with two Hellforged Siege Claws, two Melter Guns, and two Hellflamers. So the Melter Guns are inside the claws and the Flamers are mounted in the torso on the chest weapon mounts. So this is a vehicle, so we have the new rules mechanic of degrading capability as it takes more damage and at below half damage, this loses its movement, so it drops to five and it loses a point off ballistic skill and weapon skill accuracy. And then at a quarter or less damage, its movement goes all the way down to three and it's hitting on a four plus. So damage to this thing reduces its speed and the accuracy of its firing and weapon systems. But it doesn't lose any toughness or saving throw. All right, let's take a look at the weapons then. So first we have a hell, now this is where potentially we've got a little bit of a problem here and it's it's a problem around differentiation of capabilities. So we first have the Hellforged Siege Claw, these melee melee, strength times two for the claw, AP minus three, so pretty potent, and then a damage value of three. So I like this because we've got some weapons here with set 
damage values. And I think that's really neat that. And it takes, it's taken some of the randomness out of the game. And I appreciate that. Well, you want randomness in certain instances. What they're saying is, because of the nature of this melee weapon, being as it is, it's basically saying a, a hit is gonna really solidly connect and do an awful lot of damage. I think that's really good. Thumbs up, well, you can't see it. But yeah, there's the top of my thumb. Yeah, I think that's a really good um, design choice there on the rules. And then we have a Hellforged Siege Drill. So this is the alternate weapon. Melee again, strength time two. However, the AP moves from minus three up to minus four and the damage is a fixed value of four. Now here's my little problem. So that's a, that's a better weapon. Here's my little problem though. As presented, why would you take anything other than two siege drills? Because there's no additional cost to have the claws. In 7th edition, there was a bit more differentiation on the capabilities of these two weapons, i.e. one was very good at armor cracking, the other was very good at killing living targets. Now they've changed it around a bit, so the siege claw is like a standard weapon and a siege drill is an upgraded and more powerful weapon, but there's no other special abilities. I suspect or what i hope to see is when we get the proper points values for match play is that there's going to be a points cost to upgrade to the siege drill because otherwise why you know you just take them all the time so that's that right let's move on to its other fixed weapon uh, one of its other fixed weapons which is a hell flamer so this is range eight so we now have a fairly seems to be most flamer weapons are range eight although i'm, I'm guessing some are going to be further when we think of some of the specialized tanks it's a heavy D6, strength five, minus one save modifier and two wounds, and it automatically hits. So that's really neat. And again, another way of differentiating capability, it's got a, it does two wounds per hit, so it's got a higher fixed damage, and it take, there's no randomness there. Dropping the camera down a bit. The next weapon is a Butcher Cannon Array. This seems to be roughly analogous to the Leviathan Cannon Array from the Heresy, but I think it's, I don't know, not entirely sure. It's got quite different stats because that weapon was range 24, heavy 6, whereas this weapon is range 36, so considerably greater range. Heavy 8, more shots. And then it also, I guess it's not twin linked anymore, is it? So that's why it's got more shots. And this is strength 8, minus 1 AP, so not that great at busting armour, but it is 2 points per damage. And it has some special rules. And the special rules are... If you take any shooting casualties from this unit, you lose two points on your leadership for the rest of the turn. So I guess it's some sort of, I don't know if that's to, if that's a chaotic effect or if it's just because being shot by this gun is terrifying. I wonder if you can give it two cannons. Oh gosh, two cannons, that'd be 16. We'll come, back, come to that later. Right, moving on to the next weapon, a Soul Burner Rebodkin. This is range 18, heavy 2d3. Hmm, doesn't do any wounds, has no AP and has a damage of one. Each successful hit roll made of this weapon inflicts a mortal wound instead of normal damage. Ah, right, so nasty. So this is some, I don't know, some sort of life-sucking weapon. Basically, you've not got any save modifier that you're up against, but if you fail your save, I believe living targets die in one shot. Nasty. Right, now we move to our, our port over of a heresy era weapon, the Grav Flux Bombard. Range 18 is the same as before. Firing is heavy D3. Now, it previously had a large blast, a five inch diameter blast template. So that's quite a change. So it's got a relative, a, you know, relatively modest number of shots. However, its strength value is nine. So same as the last cannon. And then we get the whopping minus five AP value. So this is gonna rip through most armor that we, certainly that we've seen and I could imagine. And it does a damage of two per wound. Then it has um, a special rule and it says if a Target model has is a monster, a vehicle, or Titanic keywords. I'm not sure what a monster's going to be. I'm guessing the monster's going to be something like a big Tyranid or whatever. A vehicle, we've seen a Titanic unit, well, it's going to be like a Warhound or a Night Titan, something like that. The amount of damage suffered becomes five per hit. So this is really lethal. You can imagine you could do up to 15 damage in one shot with this gun against a vehicle target. So you could one shot a Lehman Rust, definitely possibly even a Land Raider, and it could one-shot itself as well. If it hit its, if it shot itself with its, this gun, it, would, uh, it could kill itself in one shot. Very potent. And it also says, for every five models in the target unit, add D3 to the number of attacks made by this weapon. Cool. So now we understand how blast weapons are going to work. So what it's telling us here is, per a certain number of troops, in this case five, you add a number of shots to the weapon. So... It keeps the attack constrained with on the unit you target, but it basically says you get more hits for bigger units. Quite neat. I mean, that's a way of scaling your damage 
against dispersed targets. I mean, obviously you've got the gradational effect, so you got kind of like, it steps up, but it's an interesting way of replacing the effect of blast templates. And the final weapon in the Leviathan's arsenal we're already familiar with, which is a melter gun. Right, let's go on to the war gear options and abilities and other stuff. It can replace one or both siege claws with siege drills. It can replace one siege claw and one melter gun with the following. And you have to swap both a butch cannon array, a soul burner, a rebootkin, or a graph flux bombard. Interesting. This reads, a Hellforged Leviathan may replace one siege claw and melt gun with the following. So this sounds to me like you're only allowed to fit one ranged weapon to this dreadnought now. In the Heresy, you have the option of equipping two ranged weapons if you wanted. This is an interesting one, this, because I would expect that when we get this in the Heresy, we get the option of replacing both of the siege claws with ranged weapons because otherwise people are going to have models they bought that they can't use so that's one to watch out for um, of course you know that's when they get around to replacing this but all this says to me that you know the forge world are already converting rules right moving on to the ability section we have machina malefica uh, at the end of any turn in which a unit with this ability has slain any models, apart from Overwatch, roll D6. Each of the dice getting a five or more heals a wound. So it's kind of, it seems like this is like draining the life force or something, or gaining chaotic energy by slaying its enemies. Fascinating. Hellfire Reactor, it has a five plus invulnerable save at shooting or Overwatch and a four plus invulnerable save against melee attacks. Well, that's interesting. So here they've clearly defined shooting or Overwatch attacks, so there's no ambiguity there, that's good. And it's, its Hellfire Reactor gives a better save in melee than it does at range. Intriguing. And then it has a Containment Breach special rule. And it says, if this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll D6 before removing it from the battlefield. On the roll of a six, it explodes and the hellish energies at its core are unleashed. Each unit within six inches suffers D3 mortal wounds unless it is a Psyker, in which case it suffers D6. Ouch, sucks to be a Psyker. So that's replacing the explodes rule, isn't it? And then the final special rule, Dark Fury. If this model is equipped with two melee weapons, it gains plus one attack. Ah, excellent. Does that mean its base attack value becomes five? Yes, it does, I think. Because it doesn't say you lose an attack for fitting, say, a butcher cannon. I think you go up to five. So that would give it five attacks with two melee weapons, which is, sounds very potent, particularly if you're hitting on a two plus. And then it has the faction keywords, you can see there. Really interesting stuff, that. And I'm certainly very excited and intrigued to see the first Forge World grade unit port over. Okay, so I've just zoomed back out now. So yeah, fascinating and interesting. The first Forge World unit to get 8th edition stats published. Hmm, what do I think? Well, this looks a beast. I think it illustrates how the wound system is going to allow the game's designers to have more differentiation between the units. We appear to have, certainly on the point fire weapons, a substantial increase in firepower output. However, at the same time, we do see the disappearance of certain specialist rules as well. So the obvious point is on the Grav Flux Bombard, we've lost the Graviton Pulse rule, which would leave a blast marker in place for a turn, which would disrupt movement. Yeah, it's a shame to lose that. It was a neat feature of Graviton weapons, but you can't, I guess you you would struggle to keep the mechanic as it was without the blast templates. I mean, you could impose a move penalty on the unit for the following turn, but it, from this it appears that they've abandoned having that particular effect and instead increased it's just, they just made the gun overall really potent, very high strength, although short ranged. And uh, yeah, an absolute killer versus armored targets. Let me know your thoughts on 8th edition Leviathan Dreadnought, brackets, Nasty Chaos, 41st Millennium version. I'd be interested to hear those. So I hope you've enjoyed that bonus video for today, including the bunny. Thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye. Hmm, that's unexpected. A rabbit.